Welcome to what is Art and Object's final new collector's auction uh, for 2018. We have one more auction coming up after this, Important Paintings and Contemporary Art at the end of November, but then it will be timed for a well-earned break. We've had another busy year here at Art and Object. I have just returned from a very quick trip to London where I was at the opening of the amazing Oceania exhibition uh, which showcased the work of many New Zealand contemporary artists and it was a, a fabulous moment uh, for New Zealand art in Europe. But back to the coalface, uh, this exhibition or auction turned out to be a wonderful little sort of mini collection of collections. We have the work from the Untitled Group, a collecting group. They've put together a very nice collection over the past 10 years and it was a joy for them to come in and see uh, all the works hanging together for the first time in 10 years. We have, of course, the wonderful works from the estate of Ted Dutch. Ted Dutch's work has appeared at Art and Object in auctions over the years, but it's really a privilege for us to have such an interesting selection of work by this amazingly creative and visionary artist who worked across many mediums, and I know all these little ceramic works here in the cabinet will be of particular interest to many people. We also have a number of works from the estate of the late collector John Wilson. He was a well-known Parnell identity and an architect who was heavily involved in the development of the cathedral in Parnell. We've also got the collection of our friend Richard Kittlety because every now and then we all need to do a little downsize. And behind me, a lovely collection of French prints which are providing a beautiful colourful addition to the sale. We're on view now every day until the auction on Wednesday evening, uh, so we hope that you will come and have a look at the wide selection of paintings, prints, ceramics and sculpture that we have here in the gallery. Of course the auction is Wednesday evening the 24th from 6.30pm and then the collection of John Perry on Thursday evening from 6.30pm. On Thursday we are very pleased to be offering the quite extraordinary collection of John Perry. The title of the catalogue is Collecting Gold, Collecting Dust, and that really speaks to John Perry's philosophy, the road less travelled, and his uh, collecting since uh, the early 1960s when he was an art student at Elam. And I think one of the defining factors of John's collection is his deep personal relationships with so many of the artists that are in his collection. John knew them, interacted with them, curated shows of their work. Frequently, the work that he has done has recontextualized figures who may well have been lost, if you like, in the, in the midst of history. I'm going to talk about a few of the really interesting works in, in John's collection. There's so many here, there's over 200 lots. And the feature lot, the feature artwork here behind me is Robin White's Tui Tui. Now, let's talk about the title first, because of course in New Zealand we think of Tui Tui and we instantly think of the bird. But in fact, the title Tui Tui reflects or talks to the ash of the candle nut in the Pacific, which when burnt renders down to this lovely dark kind of boot polish kind of colour. I guess there's two sides to the Robin White story, well at least two sides. There's the earlier work in New Zealand in the 1970s, the beautiful screen prints, the large scale paintings, and then Robin White went to live for nearly 20 years in the island of Kiribati. And since her return to New Zealand in 1999, her work has really been pan-Pacific. This is a really interesting, beguiling two-part work by Robin White, which is atypical, and that really speaks to John Perry, the person, because he is very much an atypical collector with a very different take on engaging with New Zealand culture. One of John's decisive relationships is with the artist Teo Schoon, who arrived in New Zealand, effectively fleeing the onset in World War II in 1939. And Teo effectively, from that point, began a really serious inquiry to bring together to the two key strands that we find in New Zealand art, of course, indigenous practice and mid-century modernism. And on this wall here, we have a wonderful selection of the breadth of Teo Schoon's achievement from very early image making in the style of the Maori rock art as found in the South Island. This is called a bird in the Apihi River style and then these superb examples of what's become known as mud bull modernism. In 1983, John curated what is still the most important show of Teo Schoon's work in New Zealand. 
he lured Schoon back to New Zealand from where he'd been living in Australia and put on a groundbreaking exhibition of Teo Schoon's work. But here today we see Teo Schoon's breadth of achievement, the difference of his vision, and in the interview in the catalogue there are some wonderful comments by John about his relationship with Teo, who he met when he was an art student at Elam in the early 1960s. It's lovely to hang the works by Schoon together with Dennis Knight Turner. Dennis Knight Turner is an artist who operated across many different styles from what we would call near commercial art through to really interesting explorations within the culture influenced by Schoon in indigenous image making. This wonderful watercolour here, Tanico, is a classic example of the facility as an image maker that Dennis Knight Turner has and his skill as a painter. These two classic paintings here, the five dead trees and pungas and parasites, were both included in the recent Dennis Knight Turner publication by Richard Wolfe, as well as being curated by John, another important curated show by John, of Dennis Knight Turner's works in the early 1990s. Continuing on the theme of the earliest developments of modernism in New Zealand, there's a couple of pieces here that I urge you to come down to the viewing for. We're on view for another couple of days before the auction this coming Thursday at 6.30pm of course. And here we have these wonderful fabric prints by A.R.D. Fairburn that date to the early 1950s. And this work, Carry Carry, by a figure that may not be that well known to many of us, Kurt von Meyer. A.R.D. Fairburn its relationship with Teo Schoon is well documented. These images here, which are on lino block prints made by Schoon in conjunction with Fairburn, were printed onto fabric in the early 1950s. And of course, New Zealand was still suffering from post World War II rationing, and the fabric manufacturing industry in New Zealand really hadn't got up to speed. And there was fertile ground there for a kind of a DIY approach. And in line with the discoveries of the cave art, this sort of imagery became reasonably widely dispersed in the form of these fabric prints, which were retailed in the form of fabric, dresses, coverings for cushions, and even curtains. And it's really wonderful to see that the fabric itself effectively can be displayed as an artwork. Kurt von Meyer was an American art historian by training who came to New Zealand in the early 1960s to set up the, effectively the art history department at Elam. He was there for a couple of years in the early 1960s when John Perry was a student and he came and went quickly but his influence and his different take on the culture and the role of the artist within the culture had a really decisive interest on many New Zealand artists who went through Elam in the 1960s. He's a name that again is probably slightly forgotten. He went on to have uh, an absolutely wonderful career as an academic critic and writer in America in the 60s, 70s and 80s. Of course in John Perry's collection we have one of the only Kurt von Meyer paintings that you will ever see in New Zealand. I'm a caretaker, I'm a kaitiaki of this material that I've saved and rescued. I feel a bit like an orphanage in a sense, in the sense that a lot of the works that I've acquired are works that other people haven't seen. They haven't seen their merit, their authority, their beauty. It's a blessing and a curse because I do believe, for some curious reason, I got it maybe a bit of an overdose of the collector's gene. I've had this burden. It's been a beautiful burden and I have no regrets.